Welcome back everybody, my name is Robert Doman, and in this video we're going to be looking at GB Studio 4 and how you can use it to make your own Game Boy games. So if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that I make Game Boy games with GB Studio. I've released a few, I've got one on cartridge you can get from my website, and also you can get that same game on the Switch. So if you've never used GB Studio before, it's a drag and drop game engine. It lets you export to the web as well, that's where you can play a lot of my games on itch.io. And just like the main website suggests, I recommend checking out GB Studio Central as it has lots of written articles to help you get started. But to get started, all you need to do is go to GB Studio, click on download, which will take you to itch.io, and then you can click download now, and you can say no thanks, just take me to the downloads, and then boom! you can download your version of GB Studio that you need. So we're here now in GB Studio. All we have to do is uh, open up the application. You'll get asked if you want to make a new project. You've put it, you find the file place you want to put it, and you can click Sample Project, which lets you open up what I have here, which has all of the scene types already being used so you can experiment and see how GB Studio actually works. And I really recommend you do that. First of all, just poke around a bit, see how to use the interface, try and get an idea of what's happening. So for example, we start in this scene here with the orange arrow, and then we move to this scene using this blue bit here. And we can follow it around and see that we, we move from scene to scene, we move over here, go over here, and then from here, you get taken out to here. And then from here, this is more of a hub level where every other level kind of connects. So if we press play, we can get a better idea of what that actually means. All right, so we, we start with the logo, just like we knew, and then it brings us into the title scene with some music. We can press start, which is enter, and then we can press new game using the arrow keys, and Z, which is like A on a Game Boy. And then we get brought into the main first scene. Got some music playing, we can see this uh, nice elephant showing off some parallax background scrolling. Got some text popping up on screen. And uh, we can move to the next scene, as we should know. And now in this scene, we got slopes, which is perfect for platforming games. And uh, we've got more talking to characters, jumping over things. We've got squishing stuff. And all of this you can find by just clicking through the project, right? So let's keep going. Let's get past that annoying turnip. And there's a save game function here, I think. Yep, save game. So you can now know by looking into the project how a save game might work. And then we'll move to the next scene, which is the top-down 2D uh, moving around. So as you can see, this is more like Pokemon, while the other one was more like a Mario game. Uh, we have animated tiles, we have scenes that connect. So this is more like you might expect from a game, where you can move from scene to scene quite easily. You can interact with characters by talking and they give you some good tips about actually how to make GB Studio games, which is so nice. So let's close this and have a look around the project again. So fundamentally, what you need to know is already all here, but you just need to know what to click on. And that's what I'm going to help you with today. So if we click on the first scene, you might be wondering, how do we get to the second scene? And you see there's this blue line. That is in reference to this event right here at the bottom right that says change scene to UI slash title screen. The UI slash title screen is referring to the scene tab on the left, which has UI and then title screen. It says change scene, so then it changes scene into here. And this one, for example, has change scene written right here. So then it moves into this scene. So the change scene event moves you from scene to scene, but you might not want it to be on initiate and initiate means when the scene begins so uh, this one is um, blocked by this loop here where the player is asked when like do they want a new game and if that's true then they get sent to this scene another way a player can uh, change scenes for example is by interacting with actors so as you can see here this elephant here is an actor we can move it around um, and we can interact with it so if we were to interact with this, we want change scene. Maybe, maybe we want to send them back to the logo screen, for example. So if they interact with this elephant, they get sent back to the logo screen. Doesn't sound 
like a very good game, but uh, but I'm just demonstrating how you do things, right? So that's one way of doing it. The second way, as you see here, is a trigger. You can get a trigger by clicking on this plus and choosing trigger, and then you can draw the box. And then we have on enter and on leave. So if the player leaves, maybe then we can change, I mean, if the player enters, I mean, we can change scene, we can change it to where we want, or vice versa, if, if they leave this box, they, they change scene. So the player can either interact with actors or go and trigger boxes. The player can also have controls. For example, if I attach a script to a button, then I can say, when the player presses down, they change scene. And I'm just using change scene as an example. You can find lots and lots of events in here, and I have lots of different tutorials on how to do different things. But I definitely recommend experimenting with all of this stuff and also looking at how all of the um, different pieces of this sample project work to get a better idea. So we now know we have scenes and you may be wondering, well, what is a scene? Well, you can press S or this plus here to create a new scene. And a scene really is just a background image. And the background image then has collision in it. So if I click on this and click on this wall symbol here, we have the option to draw collision, which means that the player wouldn't be able to move through it. And if I delete that quick and show you this scene, you can see that the floor here is red. So that means the player can't fall through the floor. And we have different scene types as well. So um, if we talk about a, a random scene again, so we have this black screen, but we have top down 2D, which is like we were doing in this scene where we're walking around like a Pokemon game. Uh, we have platformer where the player has gravity. Uh, adventure is like the like the Pokemon, but can move diagonally as well. So it's more like a Zelda style game mode. Next we have shoot 'em up, which is you'll see if you play the game is down here. You get it by going through here, I believe, and then going on this through this door to the uh, rocket. And the shoot 'em up just moves from left to right, or to right to left, or even up and down, depending on how you set it up. And it's, as you'd expect, you just move up and down a side of the screen and you can fire by having, for example, here we've got the, the weapons thing, which is over here, initiate weapons. So if we press A, it launches a projectile, simple as. And then we have point and click, which is like this scene here where we can, instead of walking in and out of triggers, it's when we interact with the trigger. So the scene actually has like a, a normal cursor and then a hovering cursor, so it knows when it's over a trigger box. And then when we interact by pressing A, for example, it says and does whatever events we put on that trigger. And then finally, logo scene allows us to display logos or images with no actors allowed in the scene. No player character can be shown. It's just to basically show off your artwork, a logo scene, in just this classic Game Boy screen size. So to get the artwork for the backgrounds, we go into images and we can see all of the uh, backgrounds that we've seen already. And that just means that they're all in the file structure of this project. And you can either make your own and add them in, or you can duplicate these, for example, and edit them to make your life easier, which I would recommend. But it obviously depends on how you want to make your game and how experienced you are. Uh, and I have tutorials on how you might do that if you've never done it before. Um, using free software, so don't worry about paying stuff. You can't, unfortunately, you can't, you know, do painting and yeah, pixel editing in GB Studio. So if we go over to the game one again, we can see the sprites as well. So the player character is actually a sprite. How do we know which what our player is before we join the scene? Well, this says here on the right, if we click on the background image here, player sprite sheet, and we just have the player character there, player platform, it's called. So if we go over to sprites, we can see our player platform character here, and we can see if we press play, it's got an idle animation. If we go on the very down right down here, uh, we got a moving, we got a jump, and we got a climbing. So we have the animation set up, and then GB Studio happily just handles it all for us. So all we have to do is make sure our animations are correctly placed in these frames here. We can input our own like rules and when we would change animation or animation state, which is a more complex thing we can talk about on a different day. But luckily, GB Studio does a lot of the heavy lifting for us. And if we look at that elephant, we can see it's a big sprite with a big canvas and a big collision box. 
it might be useful for anyone wanting to know if they can make big stuff, which you can. And finally, obviously, if you want to play the game, you just click this big play arrow at the top right. And if you want to export the game, you have to click over here, export ROM, which is the Game Boy file that you can play, for example, in an emulator on your computer or on your phone. Or you can put it onto a flash card and play it on an actual Game Boy. Uh, we have here the export web, which is a, it'll give you a folder with files in it that you zip up and then you can give it to, for example, itch.io and you can click play this file in browser and then it can be played in the browser or you can export as a pocket file, which is for the analog pocket. So I really hope this has helped you kind of grasp GB Studio a bit better. I definitely recommend you just download GB Studio open up the sample file like I've done here, the sample game, press play, jump around, play around, think about what game you would want to make. Would it want to be a platformer? Would it be want to be like an adventure game? Would it be able to shoot them up? And then consider all of the pieces that are here in the sample project and how you can tweak them slightly to make them more of you. Maybe how you can remake the artwork to make it more unique to you and your, your game idea. And then I think your well on your way to be making your own Game Boy game in GB Studio. So I want to thank you very much for watching. I'll put my patrons up on screen right now. Thank you so much to you guys. You guys are the absolute best. Remember to like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you thought of this video by leaving a comment down below. Do you think that this was helpful? Have you tried to make a game in GB Studio before? Is this your first game engine? Have you used Unity or Unreal or maybe Godot before this? Um, how does this compare to, to those other engines? I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.